Let's explore the text tool in Designer Pro. Let's start by creating a new project. 12 by 8 is a good demo size, 3 quarter inch thick. Let's click OK. And our board appears on the screen. So let's click on the blue T for the text tool and then just click on the board. So in Designer Pro, the text tool is going to look different than what you see in the Designer Basic. There's just a couple other features here uh, that you won't find in, in the Designer Basic software. Most of the rest of it works the same. You type in what you want to carve and you'll notice here the words uh, actually display on the board. That is a Designer Pro only feature there. And we can select different fonts just as always and then those fonts will actually display and show us what it looks like there on the board. We can also use these tools over here to adjust the size. If we want to see it larger on the screen for positioning purposes, we can always scale it once we're finished uh, typing in here. We can also change the spacing of the letters or the kerning by typing in that. Uh, and we can even go to negative numbers if we want to bring everything closer together. And we can, let's type a separate line here. We can adjust the line height as well. So if we want to add more space in between two lines of text or less space, we can bring them in closer together and even overlap them if if that's a desired effect. And then of course uh, we have the same tools, bold, italics, and then our justification arc tool, and then our route mode selector. Center line still being an add-on feature, but these are all the same as the designer basic. So let's go ahead and apply this text to the board. You can move it around, position it just as always. Nothing has changed about text there. Well, we have some other features that we can use in Designer Pro that we can enhance what we've done here. One of the tools is called Edit Envelope. So let's click on Edit Envelope. Edit Envelope is a kind of warping manipulation tool that can be used not just on the text, but any pattern or element on the board. So I can move the points on the corners around to manipulate the shape of this into whatever uh, configuration I want to. I can right click on the white lines and I can select uh, a different style of, of connecting segment. So rather than being a straight line, I can turn it into a spline here. So then I can use my spline control uh, points here to manipulate this into a more organic shape. Let's do that to the bottom too. We'll kind of create a wavy pattern here, something more like a banner. And we can tweak this however we want. And then when you're done manipulating your shape, you just press OK. And it appears on the board. So it's uh, tried to maintain the box shape of the original text there. But in order to see the full amount of the manipulation we did, we just need to stretch this back out here, and then we can adjust it however we need to to make it fit within our fit within our project specs. Okay, let's just add another line of text there just to reinforce that. We'll add that.
and maybe we want this one to kind of fit within this this shape here so let's use that edit envelope tool again and we will just raise this side this time and add a little bit of that curve that we're seeing there and hit OK. OK, so we can make it some adjustments here. And that actually fits pretty well in there. If we needed to make adjustments, you can simply click on the Edit Envelope tool again and make further adjustments to the piece and then come back and, and see the adjustments made. So let's add maybe a pattern in this to make it a more complete looking design. We'll go to our filigrees and the basic patterns and we'll find something that looks like it'll fit into this space right here. and pretty nice looking little sign. Just to finish this up, we'll go through our optimization processes that we learned in, in our basics tutorials. We'll set everything to the same depth level, apply our draft to the text. At this scale, it looks like a medium draft will work well and as always we probably want to put some kind of background on this so let's draw a rectangle and add a background element to our design just kind of center a rectangle here we can right click and center this and Instead of doing a carve region, I'm going to click on this tool here, which is another Designer Pro tool called Select Material. Now, Select Material is a background texture builder in a way. It's it's an engine that allows you to create different textures through these this mathematical process. So there are several pre-built textures in here, like weathered wood, which is a very popular one. You can click on that and see how it applies. So a very popular sign background texture right there, a kind of sandblasted wood look. So let's click on that texture again and we can take any of these and clone it. And then once we have a clone of that we can rename it to whatever we want maybe wood two, and down here we actually have the ability to edit it and alter how it looks. So H is horizontal samples, meaning how much influence the horizontal is having over the, uh, the overall design, how much information is, is being dumped into the horizontal direction and the offset between a low horizontal and a high vertical gives you this kind of horizontal effect so if we reversed that you would see the opposite it would go into the vertical effect or when they get closer to being the same number you'll see it becomes just a much more noisy effect which looks much more like the stone and concrete type features that that some of these other ones have you can also use a smoothing which helps kind of reduce some of the peaks and the real jaggedness of of that uh, and then we have octaves here which allow kind of a level of how much how many levels of noise there are involved in this so two you're starting to get a very uh, simpler 
amount of noise. One is is a very almost graphic looking 8-bit kind of shape. So the more octaves, the more noise you're introducing into the, the overall piece. And it's very easily seen uh, when you are making adjustments here. So the, the biggest piece of advice on doing most of this is to actually uh, play with it. So persistence is, is basically serves as like a smoothing. You know, uh, we can go down to 10% and you see a very smooth feature and go up to 90% and you can see it is very pop marked and, and rough, even though we've still got that horizontal kind of feature. Uh, this is, looks like a very layered kind of sandstone almost. So somewhere in the middle there is closer to where that wood wood grain effect. So threshold shows how deep is the overall pattern here, how much of it are you seeing. So if you go to zero, it's going to go to the full depth of whatever the waveforms are that are that are creating these these shapes. And then up to 90, you can see how it's it's flattening out because it's raising up and you're only seeing the top peaks of those pieces there. And then scale and blur is pretty self-explanatory. So really all of these pieces here are just uh, tools to help you manipulate the image or the texture into whatever it is that you want it to look like. Uh, it's all just here to help you create some unique textures to help create uh, visual interest in your, in your projects. So uh, what they precisely do or don't do isn't really necessarily the uh, the point of of these it's more about you know play with them and and get to a texture that you like and and then uh, save it and add it to your your overall library and then apply it to your project so we'll finish doing our optimizing we'll set that to an eighth of an inch depth So let's finish doing our optimizing. We can set a feather. We'll add a small draft to, to that. And a fairly simple and kind a of vintage looking groceries and dry goods sign.